questions just next time. <laughs> We're going to do questions at the end. Are you ready? Good morning. I'm Carol Yarbrough. I am one of the CS Principals Piloters, and I'm also part of the CS for Alabama project. As a teacher at the Alabama School of Fine Arts, I have a strong interest in building creativity in my computer science principals course. Creativity is all around. Our students are immersed in it from the time they get up to the time they go to bed every day. But really, what is creativity? Kind of a traditional definition is that it's the ability to transcend traditional ideas and to create meaningful new ideas. I like this quote from Albert Einstein, creativity is intelligence having fun. I think this is well suited to the CS Principles course. But who is creative? Uh, the short answer, everyone, but I hear from my students all the time, I'm not creative, I'm technical. It's interesting that 75% of us do not believe we're living up to our creative potential. And I find the CS Principles course is not only a great way to get non-traditional CS students involved, but it is a great way to bring the creativity out in our traditional CS students. The CS Principles course is all about the seven big ideas. And big idea number one is that computing is a creative activity. The CS Principles course is assessed partially on performance tests. Each of the performance tests has a component that is creative, the artifact in the explore and the programs that are written in the create. This is an example that one of my traditional uh, CS students did last year for his artifact for his explore. He was researching Wi-Fi and he wrote this whole big comic strip. This is just one pane of it. And I was just amazed. I had no idea he was creative in that way. Uh, programming is an art. Code is poetry. I don't have to sell that to this group. Just like art, uh, code is good or bad, and you know it when you see it. <laughs> but we can't tell our students, oh, go off and be creative. We have to guide them. We have to show them what it means and what it means to create something meaningful. There are so many ways to instill creativity in the CS Principles course. There are lots of environments like Scratch, Alice, F Inventor, Snap, uh, can do graphics, graphics programming, can program music, 3D printing, so many opportunities. Um, I start my class very heavy on design. Within the first two days of school, I have students from chart board games. And not only does that have them start thinking logically, it also gets them to think about something they're very familiar with in a whole new way. And also we use a lot of storyboarding when we're doing uh, any kind of animations or games, students storyboard it to design. Do another activity with algorithms using origami and students fold animals with origami paper. And by the end of the activity, they understand the importance of sequencing and the importance of really making your steps clear. Um, the last issue of the ACM Inroads had an article about using poetry to teach algorithms to beginning programming students. That was a great idea. Um, one of the things I've had a lot of success with in the CS Principles course is treating it in some ways like a fine arts course. Go through formal uh, critique where we analyze existing artwork, artwork they're familiar with, as a model on how to critique, and then students present their own work not just the finished product, but their design and their code. And then we conduct a formal critique around it, and it really improves the quality of their final work. So many ways to incorporate visual arts in computer science principles, uh, computer graphics, the terminal graphics, in the data unit, many ways to visualize data. Music is also another area that's easy to incorporate in the course. Uh, there's a site, jythonmusic.org, 
and Bill Namaris out of the College of Charleston has a whole uh, class set of Python libraries that um, model the structures in music, uh, chords, notes, measures. Finch robots are another way to do music. But we also have to celebrate our students' creativity. I've found that uh, we put on music performances. We have an art gallery that shows our students' work. Leave it up for a couple of weeks. Their friends get to see it. They love it. My last slide, sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share this with you. This is one of the best things that happened this past year. And um, I had just a short amount of time. I had pinch robots. I gave them to the kids. I said, have fun with them and play. And we'll, in three days, you'll share them with the class. I was just amazed at what they were able to create. And it taught me that I really need to give them the opportunity to explore. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andy Kimmel. I teach at Madison West High School. And I'd like all of you, please, both people in the room and the folks listening online, to please take out a pen or a pencil. I'm going to ask you to write a few things down. My flash talk is really um, a, a thought uh, experiment, and I need you to write some things down. So please have something to write with as I'm going through my slides today. I think that everyone is trying to work hard not only to do what's best for their students in their classroom, but to look beyond their classroom. Right, to look at their district or their state or the national level to do what's best for computer science. And I want to tell you about what we did in Wisconsin. Um, in Wisconsin, we realized that the biggest hurdle to getting computer science into our classrooms was actually something that's um, positive that's in our state, and that is teacher licensing. In Wisconsin, high school teachers are required to hold a specific computer science license to teach in the state of Wisconsin. This is a great thing because it ensures quality teaching in the state, but right now, to try to get 10,000 teachers in the classroom, it's also maybe a hurdle to getting computer science, and in particular, CS principles everywhere in our state. So we realize that because there are few schools of education that offer a computer science certification, this was the biggest hurdle to us getting CS principles everywhere in our state. I'm going to ask everybody listening right now, and those of you in the audience, to just write down what's your biggest hurdle to getting computer science in your district or in your state. Go ahead and write that down right now. Your biggest hurdle is probably not going to be our biggest hurdle, but it's important that you know what that is so you can think about a solution. We formed a team, and I'm hoping that some of the folks uh, who are in this slide are perhaps watching online. If so, it's a shout out to you. Um, we had the Y Sages. That's my code word for saying the old timers. Sorry, old timers, if you're listening. We had some new faces, people that we brought along to, to champion our cause. We had the professors who can get the grants and who have the, the power of their university behind them to help us out. And finally, it was important to have friends in high places, our state department of education, our state teachers union, and even, in fact, some friends at the state capitol. Who will be on your team? Take a second and write down who you might be able to ask to be on your team to help you out and be a part of your um, your problem-solving process. We did our research. We looked at licensing laws in Wisconsin. We found out that in Wisconsin, there are, are alternative licensing programs that we can create and implement on our own. We also found out that in Wisconsin, there are, are alternative exams that teachers with a math certification can take to earn a CS endorsement. That's what worked in Wisconsin. That's our research that we did. What might you need to look up in your state or your district to make your goal happen. Go ahead and write that down. What do you need to know about? What are some hidden facts that may help you out to figure out what you're going to need to accomplish your goal? So our goals that we came up with, knowing what we had, was to create an alternative licensing program to ask the State Department of Education to approve our alternative licensing program and then to push the DPI, Department of Public Instruction, that's our School of Education for the state, to approve a content test 
uh, which would grant math teachers a CS endorsement. Okay, what are your goals for your team in your state? Go ahead and jot that down now. What are you trying to get? How do you ensure that that change happens? Right? It's not enough to have the goal and have the team and do your research and make your plan. Um, we need to follow through on this. This still has not happened yet in Wisconsin. We're still working on it. And it's important that you think about who's going to take care of defining your goals, creating timelines, keeping up that personal communication all the time, having frequent checks, and having a broad leadership in your CSTA. We want to make sure that we don't just have one or two people in our CSTA that are doing all the work and, and are being the leaders. We want to have broad leadership. How will you follow up with this program? What will you need to do to make sure this happens? I can tell you that in our state, I just found out one hour ago that my primary contact at the Department of Education is no longer working with them. And how did I find that out? I sent them an email this morning. And the email said, I'm sorry, I'm no longer working with the Department of Education. So I have some challenges myself to figure out as we go forward. So don't be, um, don't be worried if you have setbacks. Think about who's going to carry this through the end and who can you get on your team to do that for you. All right, hello. My name is Seth Pizzo, and I'm a computer science principal's pilot instructor. I teach high school in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, my presentation is about uh, using collaboration and performance task, and um, it uh, seeks to answer the question, should we be teaching collaboration before we get to the performance task, or do students have experience coming into the class with collaboration? Uh, collaboration is an important part of the CS principles curriculum. It's a topic of one of the computational thinking practices and the basis of three learning objectives and one of the two performance tasks. Uh, uh, collaboration is one of the, the uh, it's thinking practice number six. And uh, collaboration it enhances achievement and uh, it allows students to bring unique and different perspectives and skills and backgrounds into creating and, and problem solving. Uh, collaboration is an important part of three of the learning objectives. Why? Because uh, it increases performance in creating artifacts, it uh, increases insight in processing information, and it decreases complexity when programming. Uh, students are required to work in pairs in the performance task, and uh, I, I think most importantly, write about collaboration. So uh, I worked with my students uh, to help them develop a vocabulary so that they could think about and reflect upon and write about collaboration. Uh, many benefits of collaboration. Uh, three skills that are in demand in the workplace are uh, teamwork, problem solving, and interpersonal skills. And I believe that this course helps develop those skills. We learn best when we learn together. Class is more fun and student morale is higher. And we as teachers are less likely to look out uh, over the classroom and see uh, 15 hands raised when, when we uh, incorporate collaboration. Uh, however, it is challenging to include collaboration because um, students are worried about their grades. And students have uh, misconceptions about what it means to collaborate. 
and we have to address these before we start the performance task. Uh, we can we can lay the groundwork for collaboration in the classroom by incorporating incorporating collaboration into our instructional practice. Um, lots of examples of how to do this. Uh, one in particular that's interesting is peer instruction. In contrast, if you if you feel that your students are less experienced and need more scaffolding, you can teach um, collaboration directly with uh, team building activities. And here's one example. I'm sure there are many, but this one in particular is, is more directly related to pair programming and computer science. And it's the uh, Real Research Group Pair Learning website. Pair programming um, is uh, widely tested, research-based, learning structure where two, two users work together on a single computer. The driver operates the keyboard and mouse. The navigator checks the code for errors and makes suggestions. And the two switch roles frequently. Uh, on our out, we had lots of discussions on how to pair students. Instructors can get um, started with pair program with uh, video demonstrations, live demonstrations, handouts, posters. Instructors can give students practice pair pro programming by having students um, write out goals and create checklists. You can refine the pro you can re refine the process of pair programming with with student surveys and reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you to all of our speakers. We're going to do a couple of questions. So, is there a question in the house? Yes, sure. Um, one of the slides that had all the different um, programs you could use, like Snap and um, App Inventor, et cetera. What Over are here like, so you can answer. <laughs> those of you that have piloted it, have you used multiple of those in one class, or do you stick to one? What's the downfall? Uh, well, okay, the question is, um, there are many different environments, programming environments that were mentioned that you can use with this course, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using one over another, or using multiple ones? Um, I know in my course, in the fall, I teach using a drag and drop interface, and in the spring semester, I teach using text-based uh, Python. Everyone doesn't do it that way. Some people will stick with one language the whole year through. I think it depends somewhat on your student population. But um, that worked really well for me. I would quickly say that in a high school setting, I think students enjoy seeing more than one language, especially since you're with them for nine or 10 months. I'm at the university in a semester course. We use Scratch and, and because of the limited time. Great question. I tried it both ways in my classroom, and I found that my students worked much harder when they got to choose the programming language than, than when it was the programming language that, that I wanted to share with them. Great question from one more? Mm -hmm. Question online? No. Yeah. I think everybody's ready for lunch then. <laughs> so, ready for lunch? Lunch is outside. Thank you again for everybody. And I'll take advantage of this. Um, we decided that having everybody.